So the very first bit I'm going to talk about with uh, with that box is always safety. Um, and so I don't actually think I'm kind of a almost as extreme uh, as Michael when he talked about me, just like, I don't think there's any difference between light locks and the rest of the submissions, it's just education. I almost 100% agree with him. The only difference that I can say is that a lot of us have habits, right? From our white belt days or our days playing organized sports or whatever, right? How many times have you heard the expression from your coaches, dig deep, give us 110%, right? Like, don't, don't admit defeat, right? All, all these, you know, little things that you're told, but, that's gonna get your leg broken. <laughs> so like, if someone has you dead to rights in leg lock, don't dig deep, just tap. It's really fine. Like, if you're like, I know the solution, I'm gonna violently spin and run away, and everything will be fine. If that ever works for you, the only reason it worked is because your partner cares about you even a little bit. <laughs> right? So my best example of this is actually, who has a healthy-ish leg that I can use for this demonstration? You want to do it? So, here's the important thing. Um, if everybody can be on the side where the, the cameras are, that way, every, like kind of looking in one direction, otherwise there's people that are ignoring. And I like ignoring. I want to give you my full attention. So, here's the important bit that I want you to care about. So the main difference that I've noticed is that on all of our other submissions, we feel pain and then we tap, right? So. If I'm doing a, a straight ankle lock, even like this, even before she's going to tap, I squeeze her foot, that's how she turns over, right? I'm squeezing, I'm mangling her foot. She's not going to tap to this, but it does hurt. And so what's your signal? Your signal is like hyperextension or, or hyperflexion or even an Achilles lock, even like for you dirty wrist lockers out there, right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't tap to wrist locks until it hurts. It always hurts. I don't think anyone's ever been tapped by wrist lock and they're like, yeah, I felt like he was going to get it, so I tapped. No. You wait until your wrist is about to explode when you tap because I hate that person. I can't leave wrist lock. All right. Or even if you've seen those, all the late stage armbar safes, right? For me. So I have her arm all the way straight. There's still guys that are trying to hitchhike, or if you're familiar with Creed, he has his late armbar safes, but it hurts a little bit. Your elbow hurts a little bit, but you know that line, right? You've all been experienced with jujitsu. You know that line where it hurts a little, but I didn't tap. I know zero people who feel like, ow, my knee hurts, and then they leave and they like, oh, it's no big deal. <laughs> I'm gonna have that ow, my knee hurts feeling every day and be perfectly fine with no long-term repercussions. So the big thing with legs is either you have a deep understanding of what's going on, and so you know when you're caught, or the second you feel any pressure at all, not a pain, but pressure, you tap. And that would be if you're actually being submitted. But what if I'm not doing that, right? You guys are pretending that you're white belt or you're bigger situation. All I'm doing is straight ankle lock. If Natasha starts to turn her body to the right, what she's doing, as long as it's just stuck here, is that she's heel hooking herself. And what might happen is she's like, okay, that felt like it was wrong. Let me turn the other way, because that's the answer. And then she heel hooks herself the other way. She spins that way. Where it's been that way for? Slowly. Ow again. Well, why is this happening? It's happening because if I have her entire foot, especially her side of her foot against my ribs, ooh, there's a thread, oh. um, her ankle is immobilized. And even though I'm not immobilizing her hip, her rapid turn in that direction is what's going to tear her knee away. And so what I want us to all learn, I know I do this small number of you guys, maybe you would fall off a horse, maybe you were in a car accident, who might have neurological damage, where you don't have the proprioception in your knee, that you get this warning sign, that you get any signal of pressure. You might just go straight from nothing, nothing, out. And so what I'm gonna do is, um, any, all of my like, I guess, brown, purple, black belts who feel like they like heel hooks, can you guys all come over here for me real quick? I wanna see how many of you guys I have. So if you've heel hooked someone before and did not injure them, I'm gonna put you in that category. <laughs> if you heel hook somebody and their legs slowed and you're like, oh, sorry, bro. Please stay over there. <laughs> Just catch me this and so, perfect. So what we're going to do with these guys is they're all, all of you guys are going to experience a feeling of being healed. You're not going to be healed. All, all they're going to do, actually they could heal you, but I'm not sure. There's two ways we can do this. But I want you to feel that pressure in your knee so that you know if I ever feel that sensation, bad, stop, pat. If you're doing it yourself, stop moving, right? So like I'm talking about, if I have a touch angle, she starts spinning. If she starts really, oh, I should stop. She's going to hurt herself. If she's talking something, right? I have Natasha in an outside heel hook, 
right? If she starts feeling that pressure, a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm fine, it doesn't hurt yet. I'll wait until it hurts really bad and then I'll tap. But by the time it hurts really bad, something is torn. And if you're a professional, right, and you are like John Jones or someone and you're fighting for a million dollars and you're like, I'm gonna lose a little bit of ligament but I won the championship, by all means, go for it. But most of us are fighting for $5 medals that we pay $80 to compete in. <laughs> so that's not what, like I know guys who are competing at a high level and they know, they can feel the difference between a grade one tear and a grade two tear and they don't tap to anything beyond it until it's a grade two tear. But unless you're doing jujitsu or submission grappling for a living and there's big prize pools that can pay to repair that knee afterwards, I don't recommend it. So all I'm gonna do is these handsome gentlemen are gonna help you guys out and they're gonna slowly do this to you. So they're gonna, you're gonna walk up, pick your line, you can pick one of them or pick me and we're gonna put you in an outside heel hook, all right? We're gonna slowly move in the second that you feel pressure. Notice I open my legs to keep things easy, but I can squeeze them as well. And when she feels pressure, she just taps her. Boom, and then I do the same thing on the inside. You don't need both legs, <laughs> just pick a leg, but I want you to feel how it feels on both the outside and the inside. And what you should feel is some tension right here, or some tension right here. And so I come right here, same thing, and if this is not working, or like, because for example, Natasha lifts her butt up. Natasha lifts her butt up, she doesn't feel anything. Because she's alleviating the pressure. Just sit down and stay down and we're going to slowly do it. If you feel it in your ankle, we're going to do everything wrong, right? So if, you, if you're being heel hooked and you want to alleviate pressure, you point your toes. But I, I don't want you to. I want you to feel what it's like for things to go wrong. Flex that boot hard. <laughs> Flex it hard, which makes it your heel hook come on even, even easier for you so you feel that pressure in your knee. Don't. Um, don't try and escape, and I trust my assistants here to not just go, ha ha, ha. Um, I trust him. I, I know most of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so just everyone just pick your line, I'll be on the lines, and just get in line, and everyone's just gonna experience an outside and inside. If you don't feel it, and then you feel like it's going kind of far, stop, you might have nerve damage, and I'll explain to you. If you have nerve damage, then you have to just trust, has this person controlled my hips, and I have their hands touched. If they get this far, you should just tap. Right? That should be enough. Because right? I know people who, they have to intellectually tap to heal us because they have damage to their bodies. Is all making sense? Beautiful. All right. Um, why not? We can clap. One, two, three. So, uh, guys. You don't want to be hurt. But if you went too far and you didn't feel anything, that means that either they were doing an application that also broke the foot. Because think about light locks is very rarely are they pure. Very rarely are they just breaking one thing. Your, your whole body is a chain and the weakest link breaks. I've seen people getting perfectly healed and their knees for the reason are really healthy, but their ankles are so tight and weak, boom, the ankle breaks. Or there's an unfortunate situation where outside heel looks sometimes when people, a lot of guys who compete in submission grappling, They've already lost their LCL. And so they walk around kind of arrogant, they're like, well, you can't break what's not there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens is if you keep getting outside heel looks, your tibia and fibula will snap. And it, it sounds horrible. It sounds like a shotgun and you're like, oh God. And it's really bad. I, I, see, I saw a video with somebody I know actually, like the, uh, the guy wouldn't tap and it was a match for money and he was just like, look at the referee. The referee's like, he didn't tap. He's like, all right. And you hear the shotgun noise and the guy's like, don't be that guy. Like, don't be that guy. So even if you have injuries and you don't have the ligaments, these moves continue on and start breaking bones eventually. So respect them. And so as you all felt, so now you guys have sensitivity. If you ever today in this class feel that sensation, stop! <laughs> Keep yourself safe. Make sense? Excellent. So the first thing we're gonna do is understand this idea of inside control. All right? And so uh, I'll usually get to Sasha, because we've been taking this class from the So all we're gonna understand is this concept. So the important thing is inside control of C-Point is not just being on the inside, right? Because I can be on the inside and not be in control, right? So this is inside control. This is an example of it. Inside control can be anywhere, but generally speaking, it means that the part of you you're referring to is inside of your partner, right? So Natasha's legs are here. They're outside of my legs. I have, I'm on the inside. Right now, I wouldn't call it control yet because I'm not really doing much to control her. She has my feet. I don't have anything. I'm going to pull her feet to remove those, those little gaps. I pull her, her feet and remove that gap. I flare my knees out. I flex my toes, put my toes in her IT band, which 
obviously everyone knows I love my T-band being pressed on, which is great. <laughs> so pull both hands in. So right now, I'm controlling the inside of her legs. However, if I got lazy here and complacent, Natasha, I'm like, so right now Natasha has inside control on me. But if she gets lazy and she's not active with her feet, and I put my foot underneath hers and turn her knee in, well now I have control from the outside. So it's really important that you don't just get content with like, I'm on the inside, I win. No, because even though 90% of leg locks happen using inside control, there's still like 10% of them that you can catch gimmicky or even like from the outside. There's things that can happen that are bad for you. So you have to be cognizant and aware. So all we're gonna do is just pommel for inside control real fast. This is a common, common drill. And then I'm gonna talk to you guys about all the places this applies. So I think you will be kind of shocked to realize that most of your regular jiu-jitsu, you're already using leg lock positions. You just don't realize it yet. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your feet. I'm gonna have my legs from the outside. I'm gonna take my leg out. And I can, depending on Natasha, this is what happens. If Natasha's being lazy, I go through her arm. Or if I'm just bigger than her, which I am. <laughs> Good. All right. And so, um, or if Natasha's really big and strong and she's holding tight and I open, I can move her hand a little bit, but I can't go through it. So I'm gonna use my, my foot, I'm gonna pull my foot underneath her hand. So I roll my ankle, like I'm gonna go spider guard, but I'm not, I'm just gonna come through the inside. Um, your partner should give you different looks, but don't be um, too much of a bully, because this is meant to be a smooth drill, just like simple. Just like if you guys have ever been to a wrestling class, come on, right? Right, you guys have all done this drill before? Or even if this would be more similar to, I get two, Natasha pummel for two, one, two, and then I get two, one, two, it's the exact same thing. She's getting inside control. And just like wrestling with the arms, there's the caveat, right? I can have outside control, which is what overhooks are. It's the exact same thing. All your concepts you have from regular jiu-jitsu apply to legs. Have a seat. You're gonna get with your partner, and I'm gonna have you guys go, one, and then I go, one, two. Maybe this time, I'm gonna hold tighter, go. Oh, she has little feet, it's like, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> if you have little feet, this is great. Like, if you're a little foot person, like, leg locks are for you. Because it's really hard to attack you and your feet fit into places. Like, little people, leg locks, get down with it, all right? So, um, that's it, you're just gonna pummel, boom, boom, and she goes, boom, boom. Just do this for about a minute, and I'm gonna come back. So, find your partner fast, one, two, three. Um, so, you're going to now have one in, one out, right? This is just like wrestling, right, where you have your over under, and everyone's good right now, so both I have my left foot outside and Natasha has left foot outside, and we're going to play a game. It's not really a game, it's just you guys have to listen, um, so maybe there's a game for some of you who are bad at listening, who knows. All right, so anyway, I'm going to say left, and we both were left foot inside, but notice, I'm not trying to beat Natasha, we're moving together. I say right, we both. And so I might say left, right. One, two. I might say go five times. One, two, three, four, five. But we have to stay together. So imagine that I, like, I'm really slow and Natasha's really fast. And I say go three times. And I'm over here just doing one and Natasha's ahead of me. And she just does this. Well, that's not helping me very much. It's not very nice of her to do that to me. All right? <laughs> so stay with your partner. So you're, you're kind of going to slow down to this slower partner's pace. You're going to find that your inner thighs start burning and that your abs start burning. And that's good. Important thing, whenever you're on the inside, kind of slide your butt back so you're comfy. You don't want to be attacking someone and being like, I hate my life. No, you're supposed to be winning. So, no, it's good. Stay, keep your body here. Go. Right, Natasha. Yep. Right. Left. Right, left. Right. So I'm just going to call things out. You guys are going to try and all stay together as a class. We're going to practice, and then we're going to say, I've taught this lots of times, and never in all of my travels have I had the entire room all do it right? There's always at least one group who screws up, but I'm hoping that today we're gonna have that perfect streak that I've always dreamed of. All right? So, one, two, three. Right. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to get into actual leg lock stuff, and I'm going to start talking about how it's everywhere. So, uh, why are you So, here's the idea. Um, 
I need you to understand that what we just did is a very much a training position and there's lots of games I can teach you from there. But what I'd rather do is have you understand how this is everywhere. I recommend if you want to get into leg locks and you want your legs to be good at this, I, the general idea for me, 90% of leg locks come from inside control. About 90, I, where did the number come from? It came out of my butt. I never actually did the stats. But that's how I feel about it and I have decent experience, so I'm just gonna go with it. All right, so, so that means that I, in order to be leg locked, I, this person needs to have their shin have access to my thighs in some way, shape, or form. The same way how if I'm in the Tasha's guard, and she arm drags me, right? She pulls my arm across, it's an alarm, all you guys do jujitsu. In your head going, oh no, red alert, she's gonna take your back, she's gonna arm bar you, oh crap, right? You have all of these red alert, these alerts, alert, alerts, alerts in your head that go off, that say trouble, danger. I wanna add a new one for you. Anytime shins touch thighs, back. I know some of you are like, but I pass from headquarters and it works. You do, and you're not wrong. But I need you to understand that even if you're good at that, the reason you can do that is because you have caveats that are that kind of counteracting the dangers of being with shins on thighs. Anytime I have, she has her shins on my thighs, she can elevate me, she can sweep me, or she can just grab my ankle and enter ashigurami, or enter any sort of leg locking position that's dangerous for me, right? So anytime that happens, with the biggest one for me being hop on top one, um, those of you who play half guard, anytime you're in half guard and you see your partner do this, in the butt of what happened. Alert. Danger, danger, danger. He's gonna leg lock me, or he has a good butt of hot. Either way, problems are happening. So what I want you guys to understand is anytime a shin is on your thigh, that means problems are coming soon. Inside control is just dangerous. Now, if you're more sophisticated, right? If you're already in leg locking and you're baiting that and you have a deeper strategy, that's not what I'm talking about, right? This is a beginner's class. If you're a black belt and you're like, I wanna do it, great. I'm not saying you're wrong. But I'm saying in general, this is a dangerous situation. We want to avoid it. So, butterfly is inside control. Hop on one leg point. Right here, same thing. I mentioned this to legs, right? In general, I need shins on thighs. There are exceptions. Hop your knee back down. Um, two, two, two. So from right here, I'm in half guard. I don't have inside control technically. I'm in half guard, right? But I have the ability to, to, do, um, to do things like Kiminari rolls, right? Um, I can come through right here, and back up that way. And so I'm not attacking from inside control, but I'm still there. But if you realize, even my foot here, this is half of it. This is me having access to your thighs, which means I have access to your legs. Just be worried about that. Same thing, so you're for me. All of the first two guard passes I think most people get taught are what? The over the leg guard pass, access to legs. Why? Shin touch the thigh, leg locks. And knee slide, shin touch thighs. Dangerous. Now I can take a step back and pick this one up, but most people don't do that. If I'm here, you saw Heather's class and Michael's class, they both did what? They had their shin on thigh, sat down on it, there's a knee bar here, the saddle. There's all kinds of things here that are trouble for her. Why? She let my shin touch her thigh. Just realize that it's everywhere. Good. So back to the beginning. For right here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna enter into Irimi Ashigurami. Irimi means direct, it just means this is the most basic one. All you're gonna do is have your hands on feet. Same time, elbow, hand. Elbow, hand. Right? So that's step one. So when I say elbow, hand, that's what you do. Next, I want you to make sure that everyone look at your pants. You've got seams. For whatever reason, this is what I always do because I try my best to be, I guess, like genteel, right? I don't wanna be vulgar, but no one gets it. At least like women get it. Guys fail. <laughs> the guys have to say, make your balls touch their knee. Magically, <laughs> suddenly everyone has amazing Ashigurami. <laughs> I've been doing this for years. I, every time I'm like, make your seams touch their knee, and guys are doing this, and they're like, I'm doing it, coach. I'm like, no, it's not. I say, make your balls touch the knee. They're like, I'm the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like, that's what it is. So we're gonna have three steps in this. So step one is elbow knee. Step two is seams. Seems, because we're gentlemen and ladies here, right? Seems, but you know what I mean, so leave, the, leave whatever you need in your head, right? And the last one is gonna be heel and knee. Important thing, don't go knee, heel. Even though I think this knee is actually more important than that heel, for a lot of reasons, but we wanna hide that heel. So we're gonna put the heel over, pointing this way, not because I'm personally against reaping, or I think it's dangerous at all, but because there's a lot of counter foot locks for her over here that I don't like experiencing. Estimal locks, lens locks, corkscrews, etc. This is just, dangerous territory for me unless I really know what I'm doing. So toes out, and I'm gonna hide my ankle with my knee. 
I'm also a big proponent of keeping this foot on that side. I'll do the whole thing on the other side so you can see this again. Elbow knee, seams, heel, knee. See that's over here on this knee? Two reasons for that. One, this kicks your leg off the floor. The standing up and putting weight on me is one of my problems. Another reason being, there's no heel for her to counter foot off. If you guys have ever seen Dean Lister, he famously will just embarrass you. If you enter legs on him this way, he will reach down, his two hands on your heel, go ahead, Natasha, and just pull up on it, and this breaks your knee, and it feels horrible. And Dean Lister is a gorilla, and so he will break your leg off. Um, even if your partner is not a gorilla, they can still do some damage to you. So this is just asking for trouble. Um, are there times when you can have your feet here? Of course there are. But I like to have my habit being here for other reasons. Good and good. So you're gonna get your partner, I'm gonna call stuff out, one person's gonna go for a little while, they're gonna switch. So the command is, and mind you, you can choose to be ambidextrous if you want. I personally would rather you be competent on one side and useless on the other side than being semi-useless on both sides. <laughs> right, so we're gonna go with competence. So pick a side, any side. I like my left side even though I'm right-handed. I don't know why, I just do. So elbow hand, make sure same time, elbow hand. Seems. And now, important thing, I don't want you guys to stand up, I want you to reverse out of here. So if I say back to elbow hand, push it back out to elbow hand. I say seams, wait for the seams. Heel knee, back to seams. Oops, I went back to you. Elbow <laughs> knee, all right? So it's gonna be weird a little bit, but try it out. One, two, three. All right, um, so instead, what I'm gonna talk about is what I love about this. So when I first started doing leg locks, I got really angry because I went to a tournament and I was almost leg locking lots of people, and then they would just stand up, and I would give them two points, and I would lose. So I'd be winning, and like, I'm gonna finish with an ankle lock. They'd stand up, they get two points, I lose. And I was very sad. So we're gonna stop that from happening. Um, good. All right, come on over. So now what we're gonna talk about is this idea of inside control, and especially that bent knee. So um, you guys probably know there's lots of other ways that you can configure your legs, right? So there's, you know, outside. Ashi, right? And this is, in my opinion, a better position for finishing. Like, if I already have the heel exposed on a heel hook, or I already have them dead to rights and an ankle lock, I'd actually rather be on the outside. But for pinning, this knee gets so underappreciated in a Rimiyashi Garami, which is the first position that most of you guys will learn. The other important thing to relate it back to your life, stand up for me, Sasha. Ashi Garami and single leg X are just the exact same thing. <laughs> just one is vertical and one is laying down. Do the exact same thing. So don't try and separate them in the head, just keep them the same. Now, are there different things to do with right gravity? Of course, it's, it's harder when she's up here. So always think about it like this. She's in a better place right now, so I always want to try to knock her back down. If her butt's on the ground, it's easier to finish her. But even more so, this knee is my best friend. If she tries to sit up towards me and I drive my knee into her chest, sit up, it's much harder for her. If I collapse my knee all the way down right here, and she starts circling around me, it's easier for her, but I can still, if I drag forward enough, keep her down. Uh, stop a second, can I, uh, can I borrow you, sir? Because you're larger than Natasha. Yeah. Cool, thanks, man. So, and of course I rolled with you when I felt your pressure, so you're, we are talking about, no? So, uh, I'm going for me. Cool, so if I have him and Ashi, I mean, and I drive my knee forward, if he's smart, he's gonna push my knee to the side and start circling around and I have problems. Or, if I'm even more, she's gonna stand all the way up and just crush my face, and cross face me. Yeah, this, this sucks for me. Life is horrible. Let's come back. Oh. So, a lot of people are really concerned in this moment with like this foot, like, oh, this foot matters, because what does everyone do? They immediately knock the foot off my head, and they do that, and they hop over and all this stuff. And everyone thinks that, like, oh no, I really need that foot. I personally think this foot is even more important. Come back here. So if all this is all going down, if I can drop my knee, so I can bet if I can crush anything. Um, if he knocks that off, but I like to leave this knee down. Why? Because if I have my weight on this knee and I get up, it's a race as to who gets up first. I don't want him standing up. Even if he just stands straight up, when it's in a situation, he just got two points if I started on top. Come back down. If all I want to do is keep him down, I need two things for me. One, the leg that I'm not attacking, if that's off the floor, and he can't stand up. Like, well, it's not fair, but just try to stand up. <laughs> Very hard. Um, but imagine that he's savvy. He gets rid of that. He puts it back down. He tries to stand up. Next, this foot that I do have. If I start picking this up, stand up. Very hard. So, anytime that you're here, you have a knee slide waiting for you or a leg guard pass. So, 
as they, so all you do is get with your partner. You can imagine your partner's trying to come towards you. Step one, knee towards them. Imagine the side to keep coming forwards. Then, step two, yank that foot out. Step three, they're too much weight. I can't pull that up. Keep my hand on the floor. Technical stand up. Come forward into either your knee slide, if you're a knee slide person, or you're like, I don't like knee slides. And across into a classic over leg front press. I'm going to do it the other side so you can see that one a little better. So all you're going to do is practice just sitting up. So right here, our partner's coming towards us. Knee says no. He's too sad. Push that down. He's still coming. Up. Oh, hand says no. He's getting sad here. Put a lot more weight on that. So even this, or the important thing, don't grab at the Achilles. That puts weight on the point, sir. It won't oh, happen. Pinky touches the floor on this. It always slides. Really important detail. Anytime you're pulling feet or anything, touch the floor, that for me. Always have your pinky touch the floor. Last thing, he's just gotten too far. Put your butt up for me. His butt's up too high, I'm gonna have a harder time. Take that foot down. Kneel. Now I'm right here. Knee sliding here or sliding over. Straight over to this classic guard pass. You guys all learned this one. Every just to school ever teaches this pass. So I have to go over. I'm good. Get with your partner. Play around. One, two, three. favorite drill, no, like when I first learned like boxing, I was about to stroke. So I'm gonna have you guys do it. I would love it. Um, I'll borrow Natasha because she's good at this drill. First, I will be the receiver. So important detail about how, what I'm having you do. This drill, how I'm teaching it right now, is a hundred percent for the person on the inside because this is not the best way to escape an ankle lock. But it is a way that will help your partner get really good at entering an ankle locks. If I was trying to escape, I would do it a little bit differently. So, enter your ankle, actually grab one. So she's here. But it's also a classic drill for a reason. Um, there's two ways that I can open her feet. It all depends on how deep she is. Right now she's dressed as Ashley Grammy, so I'm, I'm worried, but I'm not super worried yet. If she had like my heel exposed and was like a, what heel point? And it was about to break me, I would do things slightly different. So for, if she's in a situation where like, I'm a second away from breakage, and I'm not tapping because there's something on the line, or I just I feel good, I would take my hands, and this one's gonna grab here, this one grabs me, and I'm gonna open. So that even if she cranks my knee right now, my whole body can turn and I don't break. The whole reason I break is because her legs are holding my waist in place, right? All joint locks, she needs attachment below the joint she wants to break and above. She's trying to break this, right? But come back, even since we're thinking simple, straight ankle lock, same kind of a deal. If she's got me dead to rights and she's starting to turn away and break me over here, same thing. The reason she's able to break me is because she has control of my hips. So if I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna break, I have to, do this and open, right? Like, ah. Come back to regular Ashigrami. But, the problem with opening this way is that my hands are stuck. I can't actually move very well. But I did this, why? Because things were serious. This, we were, I, I screwed up a long time ago, right? So, but if she has just entered Ashigrami, she just entered, I have more time. In which case, I'm gonna post on the outside hand. So I have space for my body to move. I'm not gonna post behind me. Posting out to my side. I'm gonna lift my hips up and put weight in my foot. Um, everyone's familiar with the boot. I don't boot regular. I boot out a little bit. Now, the Aoki lock makes this hard, so make sure when you're booting that you're not sliding your foot out like this and giving them the beautiful Aoki lock to break your leg. So you want to be booting and leaving it in like so, all the way in the side. And anytime that you're trying to pull your foot out, make sure you're always pointing your toes to avoid the Aoki lock. Good general rule, boots defend straight ankles, points defend heel hooks, but neither of them do it perfectly. People can break your boot, and people will heel hook you through your ballerina feet. It's happened to me, it doesn't feel good. It's, your knee still affects it. Yeah. So we're in here, I'm doing this, but all we're gonna do, hold it off. I'm elevating, I don't wanna just be like, my ankle is the strongest ankle in the world. It's not enough. I plant my foot right here, drive in. You see how I made her move? Come back. I wanna make her move. Now my hip's up, my foot's over here. She's gonna have to recompose herself. I push this to the floor. I move my hand out, slide over her foot. Important detail, if I was actually trying to do this in a match, I would slide onto her foot. So now she has to get her foot out from under me before she attacks me again. But for this drill, we're gonna be nice to our partner. We're jumping over the foot to help her. Now Natasha's gonna shift over, elevate my, <laughs> elevate my leg with her foot, grab my ankle, and then re-enter Ashi Grami on the other side. And moving her foot right over here, and I do the same thing again. 
Okay, I'm not doing this because I'm not all the way in danger yet. I'm practicing hand to the side, booting in, pushing this down, sliding over. Tasha does it again. Beautiful. Switch. So now showing you on the other side. I enter. Boom, she knocks my foot off. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Hops over. This is the part that I really care about. I can't have them running away. This tension is super important. It's not just picking up, it's not just holding on, it's both. Ah, where are you? Josh, I'm gonna talk about the taco grip because you didn't think yes. it was a real thing. So, <laughs> enter the taco grip. <laughs> We're going to pretend that feet are tortillas. <laughs> All right, and so her foot is my tortilla. It's an oddly shaped tortilla, but a tortilla nonetheless. When I grab her foot, I'm not going to just hold on to it like this. I want to make her big toe knuckle and her pinky toe knuckle come and become friends, as if I'm trying to hold some delicious filling, chicken, fish, whatever you like, inside <laughs> right there. Important, I'm not just grabbing toes, it's going to slip off. I'm not grabbing her ankle, it's too strong. I want to make her foot into a tortilla. Boom. Fold that big toe to that pinky toe. One, it hurts, but two, all of her power from her quad gets lost in her ankle. The ankle is like a damper. So if I hold her ankle, go ahead and move you like hard, like, this is strong. She just jerked my whole body around. But if I hold her foot, a lot of that power gets lost in the ankle. So move it around. Take your foot back. Here we go. <laughs> All I have to do is make my arm limp and hold her foot. I'm a really big fan of this grip. It's incredibly annoying and incredibly useful. In fact, if you want a free guard passing class, just walk up to somebody and just grab both their feet like this, <laughs> and then be like, show me your best guard. Because <laughs> there's no guard without feet. All right? Sorry. <laughs> so that's, that's my aside. We'll get into fun use of taco grip in the next drill. I'm a little bit over, but it's fine. So what we're gonna do, it's not run over, but like, over, but I want to. So right here, enter. She's gonna knock my foot off. Boom, I elevate. I actually will shrimp out for Shrimp in, re enter the grip again. And so I can be there, I can have my taco grip if I want. All right, and so look at that. I have this right here, I push and I pull, and here I am. For those of you that are more advanced, I'm going to give you um, how I use this drill in real roles. So if I do this and they immediately do that, which most people who have been doing this will do, I immediately come here, but I don't let go of this hand. I don't do the hand on knee, I cinch this up in a guillotine position. Let it stay already tight. And then I enter this one. I'm lazy as heck on this one on purpose. I want her to escape this one. Then I re-enter, and I go straight to my braking mechanics. Now, I don't put my foot here, because that's irresponsible, and I should never have done that. I would either put it here, or leave it where it should be on the inside. So don't do what I just did. That's the idea of the drill. But all you're doing with your partner is going back and forth. Over here, she knocks it down. Try and do 10 in a row smoothly. Boop, boop. That's one. That's two. You can even just leave your hands like this, I like doing, and get really good at this motion. All day long until your hips are not a pilot. Right? Get with your partners, have fun. One, two, three. I can't really decide this too, but in the line of what we were talking about, I like to jump and sit on their foot. And then depending on Natasha's response, I'll either jump to mount on her or come on one side. So right now you see Natasha's knees are still down. That means there's no knee in the way of me jumping. So I'm gonna hold this, but my hand can't stay behind me. I put my hand in front, I push it down, and I bring my crotch up to her armpit, like this. And then from right here, I have back attacks and arm bars and all that good stuff. Now mind you, with the way that people are getting way better at leg locks these days, Tasha probably won't touch will have her knee flared, so there's a wall right there. This now gives me two different choices. Choice one is to press her knee out and pummel differently, right? Because last time I showed you guys how to pummel this way, but there's an arm in the way, I'm gonna pummel with my knee and then flare into the inside, and I can attack her legs. Or, if you look at um, a lot of the videos about how to get out of this, people will stand up instead. And so I'm gonna lean my weight forward and start trying to stand. If her foot is here, that's one thing, but I can still shove through and I wanna stand and get through, coming forwards. If I'm ever really worried, I don't wanna fall, I wanna kind of march, take my feet out. Your watch Marcelo Garcia, he's very, very much a marcher. He's never really been a big leg lock guy, other than like one time, but he's really good at avoiding legs by one, always playing butterfly, your feet are safe, and two, by having this nice kind of high step. Fagner Rocha is also very famous for 
bring in the highest high notes. So that's it. Um, I hope you had a great time. Pommel, 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 practice with your friends. Like I said, this is meant to be like a snow in the water. Um, if you want more, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And I do have a DVD by the same name as class on digital fanatics, and so I think it doesn't suck. So.